everybody, welcome to that Stephen Rice on YouTube. I'm going over the making of my Beetlejuice piece that I just started work on here today. Uh, first thing you'll notice is I do use a lot of photo reference when I do fan art like this. First thing, I always put a new layer down with the actual image that I want to go ahead and recreate. I do a lot of original tracing of basic shapes. Um, what we'll see here is as we're going on, I get the basic shapes down and then barely ever use the reference again when it comes down to the rest of the sketch. One thing I did notice uh, as I was doing this piece was the lapel, the ruffles on his tuxedo here are probably going to be my biggest headache when it comes down to getting any of this going here. Um, I pretty much instantly regretted at this moment choosing this image to do next, but that's the way it goes is once I pick an image and once I start I tend to just keep working on it until it starts to look right. And you'll notice that I do a lot of changes in this piece as I go along. <clears throat> so what I have here right now is I'm just going over getting the basic shapes of his ragged hair, which is going to be a headache when it comes to time to paint later for me. I'm not very good at hair, as I mentioned in the Cesar Romero piece, but we're going to get this working. We're going to get something going properly here for us. So just getting the basic, basic shapes. I'm not really doing any shading or anything like that at all. That kind of defeats the purpose of doing an original piece. So I just get the basic shapes, get everything going to where we need it to kind of go here. Overall, this piece in general, at this point where I'm not even done with the sketch, as you'll see, I kind of stopped the video a little short. I'm about three hours and 15 minutes into the piece itself. And I didn't want to make this video too long, and I always like to have it in multiple pieces here. So that's why this video is roughly about 15, 16 minutes long, is I took that three hours, I compressed it by quite a bit to get this up to the speed to where it wasn't too long. I didn't want to bore anybody too much, even though I'm feel like I'm probably going to bore you a bit when it comes down to talking about the piece in general. Not much of a public speaker, but I feel it's a lot better than having the text showing there. They'll be able to hear what I'm doing and kind of go over what my thought process is for everything. Now the basic shapes at this point are done. I do flash into the reference every now and then just to make sure I'm not making a lot of egregious lines in places where they don't belong. So you'll see occasional flashes of the actual reference on a separate layer. A lot of people consider this cheating, and I don't care. I don't feel it's cheating at all because 90% of the work is my own in terms of some stylistic choices, some changing of lighting if need be, adding detail, removing detail. I think that just doesn't need to be there. And then the painting side of things is definitely everything uh, of my own. I mean, of course, I will use the reference to make sure I'm getting certain tones right and everything, but it's a fan art piece, not something of my original pieces. I do do original work, and uh, I have a feeling after I finish this one, I'm going to do actual full original piece and uh, show how my process for a fully original piece that's not fan art uh, comes to pass. One of the hardest things I, I had with this piece in general was I, I just wasn't feeling it for probably about the first hour to hour and a half of doing the sketch and getting things going. I just, something wasn't feeling right, something wasn't looking right to me for some reason and everything just felt a lot harsher than it needed to be, even though it's a very dramatic scene from the movie in terms of lighting, uh, that famous Tim Burton lighting that he always used in his early films. Uh, stood out very much so in this reference piece so even though th that was there something just wasn't feeling right about it and pretty soon you'll see that I noticed that I was doing the entire sketch in just a pure black that's as black as you can get uh, I was sketching in and that's a little bit out of the ordinary for me I like to keep my sketch as close to actual pencil lead color as possible a very very dark gray and kind of go from there. So that's why things weren't feeling quite right to me. Uh, pretty shortly, you'll see where I change things around and move forward that direction, uh, lighten up the sketch and make the change in terms of the actual color of the pencil that I'm using. In terms of any of the brushes that I use on any of my pieces, I got them all from kylebrush.com. 
I actually have his Mega Pack, which is probably the best thing I could have ever done. I used to do a lot of just meddling around and poking around and editing and changing things for my brushes constantly instead of just focusing on the art and just going ahead and buying his Mega Pack helped me out exponentially. Um, I'll throw a link in the uh, description below for you to Kyle Brushes actual page so you can go ahead and take a look at all the different brushes he has there. Now, I'm not paid to support him, it's just it helped my art so much when I made the transition over to Kyle Brushes. So, I, you know, give it a shot if you want to. And there you see that's where I did lighten the actual sketch itself, got it back to an actual pencil color to where it's not as harsh and things started to really feel a lot tighter um, for me to where I could get that dynamic range I was looking for, get the contrast that I wanted, especially in that lighting and everything. Um, it just made it a lot easier for me and it was a dumb mistake. Everybody makes mistakes in art and that's why you just keep trying and poking and prodding away until you get everything right. One of my main influences when it came to art in general has absolutely been the artwork that Drew Struzan does. Obviously I do a lot of his technique when it comes to making my fan art and everything. And uh, it was one of those things where when I was in art school, I definitely was taught in how to use projectors to project images up when I wanted to do something accurately and everything. And I learned that and I was obviously good at doing things in art school. And it's still, even though we were taught to use projectors when we needed to and we wanted portraits of accuracy when it came down to paintings and everything. Tracing uh, always was such a dirty word and I hated the fact that I still used that technique for a long time to where I wouldn't even do pieces other than just for my own enjoyment if I did any amount of uh, tracing any type of bits of a reference image at all. Uh, even though I'd sit back and remember art school and be like, you know, I was I was taught this in art school. I was taught this was definitely a very valid method. Yet there's a lot of shaming that goes along uh, online when it comes down to things like that. To where if you're not doing everything 100% organically with a pen and paper, no tracing, just rendering everything out to your heart's content, uh, learning the proportions and stuff like that, and getting everything right with just a you know pencil to paper, that you weren't a real artist. And it, it felt like that quite a bit for me, um, up until I got uh, Drew Struzan's DVD on the making of the Hellboy poster and realized that one of my biggest influences and what I kind of aspired to be able to do in terms of you know create film images and stuff like that, uh, did the same thing. He used a projector because he does work on canvas and everything, to, but he traced his, his images. And that's not a dirty word because everything else takes an artist's mind and an artist's eye to really make things work properly because a photograph's a photograph and art is art and they're completely different when it comes to making something look realistic on the page or in this instance on a screen than just copying a photo one to one. So I can't, I can't thank him enough for kind of making me feel like it was okay to do art the way I wanted to do art and the way I knew I could to get really really good high quality portraits done and that's where I'm I'm kind of at right now can I sit down and render this a hundred percent without using the reference image underneath absolutely it'll just take me a week for a sketch instead of five six hours so time's a major factor with me you know I want to spend time with my son and not just be sitting at a computer drawing away all day so when it comes down to wanting to do a piece here, I'll do it the quickest and best way that I can to get high accuracy and make the portraits look as great as possible. And when it's all done and over with, you'll see um, pretty much how I do change images around quite a bit to have them suit my taste and what I like to see in paintings. Now, if you haven't seen my Cesar Romero videos quite yet, I'll put the link down below as well to the first part. And you can walk through that. It's three videos, each about, uh, the first two are about 15 minutes long. Third video is only about five minutes or so. And it goes through the whole process just like this one will. Uh, I don't really speak on that one at all. It was my first couple videos uh, a couple weeks ago from today, which 
by the time you're watching this could be years from now but either way it was a couple weeks ago from today when I put that video in it does go through the whole process as well of a little bit different subject matter a little bit brighter subject matter as well but when it came down time to do this particular piece I wanted to do something from Beetlejuice because I haven't done anything from Beetlejuice quite yet and uh, I picked this image because there wasn't many renderings out there. There's tons of different ones of just Beetlejuice himself in his standard black and white striped suit, looking at the camera, giving that goofy grin that Michael Keaton had, and that's fine and dandy, but a lot of times I try to avoid doing stuff that other people have done ad nauseum because of the fact that I just like having something a little bit different. Now, with my Cesar Romero piece, I use a picture that millions of people have done but I just really enjoyed the image and I wanted to do something in my own style so I did I was coming up here about uh, 11 minutes into this video it's actually closer to about two and a half hours or so of, of sketching and I'm going in and working on the suit itself and with the suit I ran across a lot of problems I was trying to get as much texture in there and not have everything be as dark as it was in the reference and things just weren't looking right to me so I went back in and just started darkening everything up and what I'll end up doing is when it comes down to the painting and the colored pencil side of things once I get in there with the airbrush and everything I'll probably add those textures that I wanted in at that point and add a lot of the highlights that I'm just scribbling over right now trying to get those shadows uh, nice and dark in there and that's one thing with my work is I'm always afraid to put dark shadows in as I'm still learning and everything and I really need to focus on that and that's why I'm doing this piece is just so I can work with light work with a lot of dark shadows and not worry about having everything be seen 100% crystal clear because that's not the way you know the reference really is half of Michael Keaton's face is gone half of uh, Lydia's face there is gone and uh, it's just a lot of dark. And I tend to work a lot lighter, so this is kind of an experiment to see if I can work dark as well. Um, now my subject matter a lot of times is very dark, but the images I produce tend to be very bright, very vibrant overall, um, as bright as I possibly can, because I've always been afraid of the darks. And you'll see that's what I'm doing right now is where I did have a lot lighter shading. I'm going back in and I'm darkening it all up just going back and forth to the reference just to get it as dark as I can, get it in the right spots and hopefully make it a lot more dynamic of a piece. It was by about this point uh, when I was doing the initial sketch this morning that I really started to feel it was starting to look right. Um, Usually when it's in the sketch stage, I'm not happy with the sketch until it looks perfect. And if it doesn't look perfect, the painting won't look perfect. And there's dozens of times where I'd go in, I would fully draw a piece and I'd go ahead and start doing the painting side of it and it just wouldn't work. And I'd have to go back and I'd have to tweak things, I'd have to add more dynamic range. And I try to avoid that now because it slows down my flow quite a bit. Uh, when it comes down to doing portraits, I have them down to being able <clears throat> to uninterruptedly get one done in about 10 hours, as long as there's only one head. Usually it's about, you know, an additional three to four hours uh, from sketch to painting if there's additional heads in the piece. That's why this one's taking a lot longer. And we're coming up on the end of this video. Um, with that being said, the sketch is being broken apart into two separate videos and then from there we're going to go into the color which will be another two videos and then finally the colored pencils which will be one more video so this is going to be a five part episode uh, in terms of getting things going remember I go ahead I'm going to be releasing new videos every Tuesday and every Thursday I may break apart some of the time lapses and do some vlogs in between here and there but either way I want to thank you so much for watching this so far as I work on this nice little frilly stuff on the tuxedo itself. And I just want to thank you for going ahead, watching my videos, like I said. Thanks for choosing to watch my stupid voice, or to hear my stupid voice, not to watch my stupid voice. 
um, just blab on for the past 15 minutes about artwork and my methodology in general, definitely go ahead, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, make sure to share with anybody else who's interested in art. Once again, I'm that Stephen Rice, and I will see you later.